All right. Welcome, everybody. Thank you for joining us for day two of Connect 2024. I am Josh Tappan from the Seesaw team, and welcome to All Hands on Deck, keeping everyone in the learning loop, led by our prestigious presenters, Cheryl Carter, Digital Education Coordinator from Vacaville Unified School District in California, and my colleague, Cheryl Miyake, Curriculum Operations Manager at Seesaw. During this session, we encourage you to take notes, share insights, and be active while learning. And especially for this session, you'll see in the sticky note on the top right of your chat, uh, there is a Seesaw lesson that you can join. We've got the instructions and the class code there if you'd like to follow along and make this a little bit more interactive to experience uh, some of the principles and tips and strategies that Cheryl and Cheryl will be talking about. And remember that you get points on the leaderboard for being active during all sessions in this session. On the top right, you'll see the chat for sharing and connecting. Next to that is the Q&A for asking the presenters specific questions. Feel free, please uh, ask questions anytime throughout the session. I will be in the background answering those throughout and I'll prior prioritize a few uh, as time allows at the end of the session. There's also a tab labeled handouts where you'll find resources from today's session, including the slides that Cheryl and Cheryl are presenting. If you'd like closed captions, select the CC in the top right corner and choose your preferred language. And stick around until the end to receive your PD certificate and for the Seesaw swag giveaway. Now, I'll pass it over to Cheryl Carter and Cheryl Miyake for All Hands on Deck, keeping everyone in the learning loop. Thank you, Josh. And as he mentioned, we would love to give you voice and choice in how you participate today. So again, welcome to All Hands on Deck, keeping everyone in the learning loop. If you wanted to take a more active approach today, we'd love to invite you in another tab to log into app.seesaw.me. Maybe it's a change of pace. Please sign in as a student, not a teacher. The class code, it is in the chat, but I'll read it out loud for you right now. It's Q F V U M M. There's gonna be 150 different students you can pick from, pick your favorite number. You're welcome to save your work there and that will drive some of the data we're able to show you later today. If you'd like to engage just by simply listening, cool. Josh mentioned in the handouts tab, you can access our accessible deck that is perfect to use with a screen reader should you need that today. Or you can join us in the chat. We'll be presenting our screens with present to class and we can um, kind of model and engage with you like that. But without further ado, if you have any questions on how to jump into Seesaw, please put that in the chat. Josh is going to field and kind of help you out there. But we're noticing we have an extremely diverse audience, and that's very, very exciting. We are learners. We're here to learn about learner variability. And you can see just by looking at the chat, wow, wow, wow. So many different folks from around the world serving different types of students, grade level, et cetera. Can't wait to hear more from you. All right, a little bit about us. As Josh mentioned, I am Cheryl Miyake, the uh, Seesaw Curriculum Operations Manager. Really, my job is to work with educators like you to make very accessible, engaging, and inclusive learning experiences for all students. Um, currently, I am an Asian American Native Hawaiian woman. I have dark hair. These are folks for low vision. I'm currently wearing my purple Seesaw t-shirt and I'm joining you from Berkeley, California this morning. And I'd love to introduce my co-presenter, Cheryl Carter. So good morning uh, from California, no matter where you are in the world, it is early morning here for us. I am Cheryl Carter. I'm a digital education coordinator in the school district, Vacaville Unified School District, which is in Northern California. And um, I am a veteran teacher. I'm bringing the voice of the classroom to this conversation today and have had experiences with Seesaw since its very beginning. For our low vision or um, blind, participants. I am a Northern European uh, middle-aged lady with wonderful gray hair and glasses um, and a spunky personality to boot. 
Thank you, Cheryl. And as she mentioned, both of us are educators. I taught in the South Bay, in the San Francisco Bay area. And we just want to really position ourselves as learners with you. What we're going to walk you through today is the universal design for learning. Before we jump in even further, let's center on why UDL. You might have heard this term before, but we wanted to share a video from our partner, CAST, uh, before we jump into kind of more instruction. So let's take a look. I'm from Sanger, California, and I'm using UDL to change the world. I'm from Cardiff, Wales. I'm from Kentucky, Eau Claire, Wisconsin. I'm from England. I live and work in Netherlands. Vengo de Chile. And I use Universal Design for Learning to show teachers that it actually is possible to address the needs of all of your students in your classroom at the same time. I use Universal Design for Learning to remove barriers and provide equitable, meaningful access to all students. I'm from Malala, Oregon. Kingston, Ontario. Williamsburg, Virginia. And I'm using UDL to be a more reflective practitioner. Or, or throwing barriers to my students to make spaces for language learners so that all students have access to high levels of learning. UDL is for everybody, for all students across the world. Hopefully a lot of their testimonials resonate with you and that's why you're here today. CAS mission is to really push learning so it has no limits and that's really aligned to what we're doing here at Seesaw and the work Cheryl Carter does every day in Vacaville Unified and the work you all do day in and day out. So our objective today is to help you just be able to identify and understand what UDL is, why it's important, we got a little sneak peek at that, while also better understanding how Seesaw can help you support all of your learners. So at Seesaw, we believe accessibility means creating rigorous learning experiences in which learners can engage with grade level content and demonstrate mastery in ways that work best for them, regardless of ability or experience. So, Research shows that teachers can increase access to rigorous curriculum by making sure all learners' experiences include some of the following, accessible instructions, responsive scaffolds, and choice without put. So multiple modalities, including audio, visual, or even kin kinesthetic learning. Okay, so what is UDL? Let's get with a, a, a very good uh, definition, a strong definition. I'm going to go ahead and read along. If you want to read with me, please do. Universal Design for Learning, UDL for short, is a framework or way of thinking about teaching and learning that helps give all students an equal opportunity to exceed. This approach offers flexibility in ways students access materials engage with it, and show what they know. So the problem that we face, most of us, in our classrooms, and I'm going to share an example from Vacaville, is that we sometimes fall out of this mode. Uh, in Vacaville, one of our teachers worked with a newcomer, Stacy, and she was reluctant to learn a did not like being on the computer. As a newcomer learning English for the first time, she was very shy and disengaged to the learning environment. Seesaw created a bridge to engage Stacy quickly. We're gonna take a look at an example of Stacy in the classroom, or actually outside the classroom. I am Is it hard to speak and swing at the same time? <laughs> Say, I am swinging. I am swinging. <laughs> it's just a beautiful video of Stacy with her newcomer instructor, who is also an Hold English on. language development. Don't fall. Instructor. Don't. I don't want to make a video of I am falling. I am swinging. Great. <laughs> Great. 
this is a copy of the page in Stacy's Learning Journal, and it is a part of the English Language Explorers for Newcomers collection, which is available to all Seesaw users. And you can see how the creative tools and a variety of ways for her to show her learning lowered her affect to not only improve her English skills, but also to change her relationship with learning and school. Once she realized she was on video camera and a little magical star, she started producing language like crazy. So universal design for learning with Seesaw was the key for both her and her teacher's successes. We'll take a uh, um, We'll next unpack what UDL is and how to start to implement some of the practices in the classroom with your diverse students. Okay. Sorry. So what we saw with Stacy is the goal in education. We want agency. What is learner agency? Well, Learner agency refers to learning through activities that are meaningful and relevant to learners, driven by their interests and often self-initiated with appropriate guidance from teachers. To put it simply, student agency gives students voice and often choice in how they learn. This gives students a stake in choosing from uh, opportunities provided for them. Uh, perhaps you give students a choice between projects, writing assignments, or other activities. Their ability to make a decision triggers a greater investment of interest and motivation. So let's break down learning agency further. We're going to go ahead and just go from top to bottom on this slide. As you follow along, you can see that, and I'm going to just paraphrase, but learner agency is purposeful. So we need to have an internalized self-efficacy acting in ways that are personally and socially meaningful. We want to have reflective uh, capacity here. We want self-awareness and metacognition. We want it to be resourceful. So we definitely want to apply assets, strengths, and resources, linguistic and cultural capital. We want it to be authentic. We want to make sure that we are increasing comprehension and deepening understanding in ways that are genuine. We want to be strategic. Remember, teachers, we always have to be strategic in setting goals and monitoring learning with intentionality. And then action oriented, self-directed and collective action in pursuit of those learning goals. Thank you, Cheryl Carter. And I just wanted to acknowledge all the wonderful engagement going on in the chat. I see that, you know, we want to give you agency in how you learn today, that we might have exceeded our 150 students in our class. I invite you to try another student number that might help unlock access. And if you're not able to get in, you're welcome to join us in the chat. We'll be sharing our screen in Present to Class, and you can engage that way. As we go through the deck, which is also linked in the handout, at the very end of the appendix, there should also be a share link where you can grab a copy of our actual lesson as you sign in as a teacher, and then you can save that lesson in your account. I just wanted to open up a couple ways for you to engage today. Look at this beautiful picture of children. I love this picture. You may be thinking, how can all my students reach the goal of learner agency? But there's no way I can help them reach this very ambitious, lofty goal. But guess what? You're already doing many of these things or else you wouldn't be at Seesaw Connect. Magical. So we have more pictures for you to just think about the classroom setting. Design learning environments that support learner agency requires continually examining power dynamics by challenging structures that view the educator as the sole authority and creating space for learners to make sense of content individually and collectively through interaction and reflection. Further, supporting learning learner agency requires recognizing dimensions of culture and identity and examining where bias may be a barrier to learners being able to fully exercise their agency. 
we have two great pictures on that last slide of older students working in groups. And then we have the smaller, younger students in interactive play. It looks like they are experiencing a store, maybe a little mini economic lesson. More pictures of beautiful classrooms representing many different learning uh, capacities. So UDL aims to change the design of the environment rather than situate the problem as the perceived deficit within the learner. It's a really important thing to think about. When environments are intentionally designed to reduce barriers, every learner can engage in rigorous, meaningful learning. So let's explore deeper so that you can tap into students' interests and give them access to their learning in an inclusive manner. Our goal today is to help you try one new thing to work towards learner agency for all of your students. And we bring to you the wonderful slide of UDL guidelines. You're going to see this frequently in both our slide deck and over in the Seesaw um, activity, but this is the graphic orga organizer for the UDL um, guidelines, and this is through CAST. And Cheryl M. is going to help us take a, look, a closer look at this resource. Thank you, Cheryl Carter. We want to preface again that we are learners along with you. This might look slightly different than guidelines you might've looked at at the past. And that's because it was released on Tuesday. What we have been using so far was from 2018. That was guidelines 2.2. Well, here right in front of your eyes are guidelines 3.0. You'll also see it linked in the handout section so you can download that. On the CAST website that we'll show you later, it's available in many, many different languages, all the languages of the UN Security Council. We want to make sure you can access this super powerful resources. But let's take a look at some key vocabulary and how to read this just to center our discussion today. So first, let's look at the vertical columns and they are organized into three principles of UDL. Engagement in green, representation in the middle in purple, and on the right side in blue, action and expression. If you're familiar with older versions, these are the same principles. Nothing's changed yet. Now these principles are broken down into guidelines, and each of these guidelines have corresponding considerations, the bulleted lists that provide even more suggestions. Well, the guidelines are organized horizontally, as you see here with the little orange rectangles around. The first row is the access row, and that includes guidelines that suggest ways to increase access to the learning goal by designing options for welcoming interests and identities, perception, and interaction. The second support row includes the guidelines that suggest ways to support the learning process by designing options for effort and persistence, language and symbols, and expression and communication. Finally, the very bottom row, the executive functioning role, includes guidelines that suggest ways to support learners' executive functioning by designing options for emotional capacity, building knowledge, and strategy development. If you're familiar with the old guidelines graphic organizer, you'll notice that some of these guidelines' names have shifted. Really, the thinking here is we want to be inclusive that every learner has very intersectional identities. And we'll dive deeper on some of the changes uh, shortly. All right, as I mentioned, the UDL guidelines consist of nine guidelines that you see in the little boxes here. And underneath each of the guidelines, there are 35 total associated considerations. We used to call those checkpoints, but now they're called considerations or prompts. These guidelines, again, were developed to support educators across all contexts, from early childhood to after school, to workforce, to adult learners like us today, really to empower all of us to apply the UDL framework to practice. The guidelines are not meant to be prescriptive or a checklist, hence the move from checkpoints, but it's really a tool that offers a set of suggestions that can be applied to reduce barriers, sustain and honor learners' multiple identities, and maximize learning outcomes and opportunities for all learners. Guidelines can be mixed and matched according to specific learning goals and can be applied to any particular content area or context. And that's what we're going to see in just a bit when we hop into Seesaw, is we're not going check, 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 it meets all of these considerations. 
um, on the curriculum side, we were very intentional of trying to um, you know, incorporate a variety of these considerations in our lesson design. Now, as Cheryl mentioned, you would not be here unless you're already incorporating a lot of these guidelines and consideration into your practice already. However, learners may still be experiencing barriers to their learning. And you may still be relying on methods and materials that unintentionally create these barriers. And we are, again, learners with you. Our goal today is to just see what's one little tweak we can make to help uncover and address these barriers and more intentionally design learning environments and experiences that fully honor and value every learner. So our goal today is just to start unpacking these and how Seesaw can help you design more inclusive learning environments. Let's first jump into the green column of engagement or the why of learning. As an educator, you help to provide a purpose for learning through multiple ways to activate schema, tap into students' interests and strengths, and provide multiple options to engage and connect to learning. As you know, and as Cheryl mentioned, affect represents a crucial element to the learning process. And learners differ markedly in what sparks their motivation and enthusiasm for learning. Learners must be able to bring their authentic selves to the learning environment and find connections to what matters most in their lives. If they don't think it's valuable, they most likely are going to struggle with engagement. So the UDL framework really emphasizes the idea of learner variability and learners multiple and intersecting ideas and interests. And that are essential layer of fully recognizing the notion of learner vari variability, excuse me. Now, the second purple column in the middle is representation or the what of learning. These are the instructional resources and learning experiences we craft and share with students. I wanted to quickly pause and say, if you are in the handouts, the slide deck, on the bottom, there are wonderful hyperlinks that when you click on it, it'll take you to the CAST website so you can learn more about each of these principles. Uh, for representation, you know that learners differ in many ways they perceive and make meaning of information. For example, those of you with sensory disabilities like blindness or deafness or learning disabilities like dyslexia and those representing diverse or non-dominant cultures and languages all approach content differently. differently. And these differing approaches must be honored and valued. Mm -hmm. Equally important is the consideration of, of how people, cultures, individuals, and collective ideas and perspectives and way of knowing are represented within the content. And that's really what we try to do at Seesaw is make sure all of these different identities and ways of knowing um, are manifested in the content so that your learners see themselves in the learning. Learning and the transfer of learning occurs when multiple representations and perspectives are used because they support all learners to make connections with as well as between concepts. In short, as you know, there is not one means of representation that will be optimal for all learners and providing options for representation is essential. Finally, thanks for sitting with me talking at you. The third blue column is action and expression or the how of learning or ways for students to express and share their learning. This is really where the heart of Seesaw always has and will continue to be. Like Cheryl said, instead of only reading and writing dominated tasks, us at Seesaw and all of you here really strive to provide multiple means for students to choose their preferred way of practicing and demonstrating their learning. Learners differ in the ways they navigate the learning environment, approach the learning process and express what they know. Therefore, as you know, it's essential to, to design for and honor these various forms of action and expression. For example, for all individuals, including those with disabilities, they approach learning tasks differently. Depending on the context, some may express themselves in written text, but not speech and vice versa. It should also be recognized that action and expression require a great deal of strategy, practice and organization. And that's another way in which learners were differ. In reality, you'll see this as a common theme. There is not one way of action and expression that's optimal for every learner. Action and expression and having options for it are essential. So why is UDL important? Hopefully, you know, with your metacognitive, metacognitive um, little helmet on, you realize this for yourself. It's very crucial to provide options for learners to engage, 
represent, take action and express their learning so they can experience more agency. And hopefully we're working on this with you. We're trying to provide a bunch of different ways for you to engage today. So keep putting things in the chat. We'd love to dive deeper in a bit. It wouldn't be a presentation without an amazing quote. And um, many of you might be familiar with Joan Bowler. She's a mathematics professor at Stanford and has worked with neuroscientists to prove that neural pathways and learning is optimized when taught in a multi-dimensional way. Have you ever said to yourself, I'm not good at math or I'm not a creative person? Research shows that those fixed assumptions that we have about our abilities can actually be changed. Our brain structure changes with every different activity that we perform. Uh, wow, the brain develops as we learn and struggle, creating connections as we complete uh, learning tasks in different ways. Proving that all students can learn how to do math or to be creative. When students experience learning in multimodal ways that require different pathways in the brain, they see it hear it, act it, and touch it, brains are strengthened and learning is maximized. Students not only gain a deeper understanding, but are able to transfer that knowledge across content areas. So here we come to another example. This is from my home district. I have two students in uh, mini videos here. The first one is Santiago. And Santiago is practicing activities. And we saw improvement over time, but he was really re reluctant to speak in class. Then he discovered that he could report himself. And he became so fixed on perfection when he heard himself speaking that he would keep re-recording himself. And it lowered his affect and he started participating in class. There is a yes, this is a clock. Now his targeted grammar is not exactly what we want uh, on that slide, but what it shows is that his learning is valued. He recorded and that was what he did with his picture of his clock that he, he drew. We have multiple multiple mortalities going on there in learning. Sorry, my, my mouth got a little jumbled. My other example on this slide is um, Crit. And she was playing a, a game in the connect portion of the Seesaw Newcomer Lessons. And it's a charades game with playground equipment and talking about different um, grammar of playing or doing. And it was an unplugged activity, which is great. We got them off of their devices and actually kinesthetically working in the classroom. You've got to watch this. It's a great video. Oh, what is she doing? Dad. Dad. You, we say the whole sentence. You are playing One more time. One more time. You are playing the tag. 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 Can you spell tag, Maria? T A. T T A G. Good job. Tag. Good. All right. Good job. So you are playing tag. Yes, I'm playing tag. Yes, I'm playing tag. Good job. Give me five. Yay. What are you doing? Are you dancing? Yes. Okay. Hopscotch. Now tell me. I'm playing hopscotch. Ah, can you run? Pretend you're running. Oh my goodness, Crit. Would you say I am playing running or I am running? Yeah. Is running a game? No. So I am running. Can you jump? 
is that I am playing jumping or I am running or I am jumping. Good. Do you hear the difference? One is for a game and one is when you are doing it. Yeah. Very good. Very good. I love our energetic newcomers. They're so unbelievably fun. And once that affect is lowered, they're engaged actively in their uh, sheltered instruction for two years in small group at the elementary level. So now we're going to discuss why UDL is important. You can go ahead and use the chat and start uh, talking amongst your peers. Why do you see UDL as important? Let's get the think tank going out there. Great, we see that the mic tool is extremely helpful, especially for those students who are reluctant to speak in a large group. Like Cheryl Carter mentioned, they get a lot of rehearsal. They can re-record until they're ready to share with others. We see from Dedra that, ex please excuse me if I'm pronouncing your name incorrectly, um, a great log of developing language. They love seeing it in action, so do you. It's giving everyone a voice, it deepens learning. Anything else, Cheryl, that you're seeing? Um, I'm kind of scanning through. It, a lot of it's the mic tool, so it would also include the fact that we have the video camera. You know, I want to also uh, shout out to sentence frames recorded by teachers. Those are really supportive to model language development, regardless of whether you're a language learner. Even our littles need that structure, and it, that's one of the features of Seesaw that's so empowering is the be ability to record both as teacher and student. Thank you, Cheryl. I also saw from Gail up above when scrolling, she wants to really honor full body learning, a lot of TPR. Mm -hmm. um, I had the privilege of going to CAS conference earlier this week, and I always thought voice is the lowest barrier to entry for learning, but not true for all students. Sometimes it's little body movements. Sometimes it's giving emojis or images that they can then drag and piece together to create a sentence from the images. So it really pushed me to think about learner variability and all the ways students want to express their understanding. Awesome. Thank you so much for engaging in the chat. We really want this to be um, a environment where we're learning with each other as well, not just from Cheryl and I. All right, let's take a look at one of the ways Seesaw supports UDL to support all learners. I said support a lot, didn't I? Well, I am from our curriculum team and the Seesaw Library is our bread and butter. As you may or may not have known, the Seesaw Library contains comprehensive topics for all elementary grades, including pre-K and TK. It's filled with high quality content designed by instructional experts with built-in accommodation tools to support differentiation. Now, these lessons, as Cheryl mentioned, we really strive to balance online as well as offline learning. We really want to value physical and collaborative learning environments. And the good news is they're ready to grab and go. Of course, you as a teacher can take our, our lessons, make a copy, tweak it to best need your students where they're at. Now, our lessons include built-in formative assessments that help provide very powerful learning insights for you to scaffold or extend learning. And each lesson leverages Seesaw multimodal tools as you are talking about in the chat that meet a variety of learning needs. Now the library includes timely resources that you see up at the top in the feature this month, quick daily routines that you're seeing in that little yellow tile with the apple, as well as hard to find content areas like socio-emotional learning, character building, computer science and lessons in Spanish. We also offer additional packages that you see here on your screen in early literacy and in English language development that will provide niche curriculum solutions for your schools and districts. Now, all the work our team does for the Seesaw Library directly ladders up to the core use cases of high quality instruction and accessible differentiated learning, which are the tenets of the Yale guidelines. So let's dive in to one example here from our fun phonemes co collection. We're taking a look at the P sound. If you as a teacher are in our Seesaw library, you're able to find this in the early literacy tab for free. 
you can go ahead and save it to your library. If you're joining as a student, we are going to take a look at some of these examples and other examples in a bit. Now, each lesson, whether it's fun from fun phonemes or another collection, typically follows the structure you see here. We start with gradual release with I do, we do. We want to recruit that interest and engage students while supporting various ways to represent the targeted skill and vocabulary. We try to bring in real pictures or videos, like Cheryl Carter said, model what exemplar sentence frames or vocabulary look and sound like. And we want to give many, many different ways to practice collaboratively. So right here, I'm going to show you a video in a bit, is an example from our Fun Phonemes collection. Students are introduced to a new phoneme or phonetic sound or practice with Soundhound and Teacher Barnes. And if you are in our library, these videos and this lesson has gotten a glow up. You might see it's different from what you saw a couple weeks ago. So check it out. Today is the sound party. Come join me. Oh, hey, Sound Hound. Hi, Teacher Barnes. I'm excited for the sound party. I was using a pan to make popcorn today. The place smelled so good. I love that you were making popcorn. I bet you heard lots of sounds when the corn was popping. Yep. I heard popping, sizzling, and more popping. You are going to need that pop for this party. Are you ready, Sound Hound? <laughs> Let's make the p sound. First, I put my lips together. Then I push out my lips and blow out a puff of air. P. P. Now you try. P. You got it. Listen to these words that start with the p sound. Pan, p pencil. In the interest of time, I'm going to stop here, but I encourage you to dig further into this lesson and explore. As you saw there, you're seeing um, expert modeling. You also see students being invited to practice with Teacher Barnes as well as Soundhound, and that really lowers the effect for them. You also see those real photos that help them connect and activate that schema. All right, now thinking about the UDL guidelines, you can see here that we are welcoming their identities and interests. We're really helping with that perception and the language and symbols, like I mentioned, we're modeling that for them. And because it's an I do, we do experience, we're really helping students sustain their effort and persistence through you, know, you all as expert educators, scaffolding, encouraging that practice together. All right, typically in the lesson progression, we go to the practice or apply modules. These are more of a you do. Depending on how you want to implement though, you could be pulling a small group, you could be working one-on-one -on -one with students. We wanna give you the power to utilize these activities how you see fit. How you see fit. Gosh, like Cheryl Carter, I think my mind's going faster than my mouth or vice versa. Anywho's. These activities here really give students the opportunity to practice new vocab and skills. And for you, there are opportunities for formative assessment. Notice it says formative. We want you to use this data to continue to tweak your instruction to extend or scaffold student learning. So let's take a look really quickly at some of the practice activities from this Fun Phonemes collection. Use the video camera to record your mouth making the p sound. Use la cámara de video para grabar su boca haciendo el sonido p. p. Tap Soundhound to listen to the p sound. Record yourself saying the p sound three times. Tap Soundhound to hear the sound. Use the drawing tool to color the circles that make the p 
sound. Tap each picture to hear the word. Use the drawing tool to circle the picture in the cloud that starts with the same sound as the picture in the balloon. Pan, pan, pear, pear, heart, heart. One thing you might not be aware of is, of course, we want to give you, the educator, as well as students, scaffolds with those audio instructions you see up at the top and sometimes with written text on the screen. But you as an educator and students as learners can use any of the creative tools you see here. Should you want students to record their screen and explain how they are engaging, they can. One thing you might not know is for students who might need a screen reader, all of this is accessible to them too. And if you have questions around that, I'm personally happy to connect with you after and walk you through that. Alrighty. Now here, just quickly looking at the UDL guidelines, you can see many, many of the considerations that we took into considerations when building these activities. We really wanted to leverage the English and Spanish audio directions to give access and, and represent the content so that students have more persistence as they're learning. As you saw here, there are many different tools that we are leveraging to help students showcase their understanding and really scaffold and get them to, to have artifacts of their learning. Of course, you know, we can go off script and we can use additional tools, but this gives you, the educator, a starting point. And like I saw in the chat, once you make a copy of this and add it to your library, you can tweak it to further meet your instructional goals and meet students where they're at. So you can see here, we're really thinking about the creative tools and how we can help students interact with and express and communicate their understanding. Really quickly, we have a new tool launching, which is focus mode. So especially on videos where really students are just listening or watching, attending to the input of knowledge, we don't need all the other creative tools. So that's what you see at the bottom with the little hand tool at the, at the bottom of the screen. This helps support their executive functioning, which you can see represented here in the UDL guidelines graphic organizer. All right, couple more sections. We have our connect, which Cheryl Carter showed us example of earlier from the early literacy, uh, sorry, um, English language explorers collection. These are partner activities which can be completed at home, extending the learning, closing the learning loop, or at school. Students can record their responses. This is great formative practice and also facilitates oral practice and transfer of vocabulary and skills. And what a really neat way for families at home to watch an instructional video, really lowering the effect for them, hearing and seeing how any concept, skill, vocabulary is being used in the classroom, and then engaging with that activity with their child at home. How powerful is that? That helps also clarify any misunderstandings that students may have and gives students the agency to be the teacher and share what they learned with their family or peer at school. And then of course, they can capture their learning to further continue the conversation and the learning together collaboratively. Yes, and I agree, parents love to see these. So these connect activities, we personally love on the curriculum team and it's really addressing many, many of the guidelines and considerations you're seeing represented here. We want to promote that skill transfer. Think about the gradual release model I'm walking you all through. It's really building that learner agency and giving the ownership to students to then continue learning and pass that on to others. Last but not least, most lessons have a show what you know section. It's still what we call formative assessment. You, we want you, the educator, to take these insights no matter how students are showing them, whether they're recording, dragging and dropping, and uh, have auto scoring, writing, typing, taking photos or recording videos, we want you to use that data to help you reflect, 
and to help students reflect on their learning progress to continue driving this process forward. So I'm gonna show you this really quick video of what this looks like from this collection. Use any tool to share what you notice about the focus sound. As you can see here, there's a variety of different tools they can select from. Tap SoundHound to listen to the focus sound. Move all items that match the focus sound into the blue cloud. I'll pause this here. Most of these early literacy collections have formative assessment and we're gonna get to experiment with that in just a bit. Essentially, they're sorting and it's auto scoring. So it really saves you, the educator, a lot of time to get the insights and data you need to pivot instruction. All right, so as I mentioned, this is kind of what it will look like on your dashboard, but for every single student. And then you can drill down and look at students' individual work. So in terms of formative assessment, this uh, executive functioning really is being, you know, intentionally incorporated into the curriculum we build at Seesaw. Oh, goodness, it's time to get ready to explore. I know some of you are superstars when it comes to Seesaw and others, you might just be beginning to dip your toe into the Seesaw pool. Regardless, there have been so many changes and so many in, um, new features in Seesaw. I think everyone will step away with one aha, if not many. So here is what we are going to do. We're going to go into Seesaw. We Cheryl and I, created a model Seesaw lesson. And so we are going to go through with some formative assessment pieces. We're going to do some new feature reveals and talk about some different pieces um, of the Seesaw lessons. First and foremost, I want to show you that we have a modeled similar structure to Seesaw here. We have our slide deck at the top, which is a link that will get you back to exactly what we've been going over. But then we have introduction. We've assigned this if you are a student in the class. If you are not a student in the class, don't panic because we're going to use the amazing present to class mode. That may be the place where you insert yourself into Seesaw use because you're not ready to assign work. You can teach from the platform, and I have a lot of teachers who do this. So we have an introduction. Then we're going to go in and we're going to look at some practice samples. We're then going to look at some connecting ideas. And then we are going to lastly go into the show what you know section. So we have definitely condensed this. We're not going to get to every slide in the uh, activity lessons. Some of them are marked do now and some of them are do later. We want you to explore. If you are in a student account and want to pop around, feel free to. We understand that some of us learn at a little bit of a different pace and that's okay. So now looking at introductions, the introduction section sets the stage for learning through engaging videos or examples. So I want to call out that we have three examples. The first one is um, letter A, and it is an animated video about the letter A. That is very primary age. You would, would potentially be TK, pre-K through maybe first grade. You could also be in a special ed classroom, self-contained. The next one, you're going to feel a different kind of a, a style. That is targeted for like the third through fifth grade area, and it is grammar detective. It's a little edgier. The video is still professionally made, but it speaks to a different targeted audience, which I have to applaud Seesaw for thinking about what age group they're going to be um, having view these videos. And then the last one, which I'm sure you're going to notice a lot here, puppets. There are puppets everywhere. And at first I thought, puppets? Puppets? Guess what? The kids eat them up. They start talking in the voices of the characters and they absolutely engage with the puppets. So what I want you to do, take a second. Cheryl, why don't we ask the audience, which video do they want to see? We'll play just a, a small snippet because on slide, all right, was that five, I believe? On slide five, we have formative assessment tools. We want to take a poll from you and 
We also want you to give us a short response. Or, um, I'm sorry, I got the wrong phrasing, Cheryl. Could you fix me on that one? Uh, yes, after we engage with one of the videos, and please put which one you want to watch into the chat right now, we'd love to take a poll and see, you know, what do you think of these videos? How engaging are they? Once you drop one of these emojis here on our end, we'll get all the poll data that we'll be able to show you. And if you could type, explain, elaborate a little bit further, we'll show you our new free response. Free response. Feature. Sure. Yes. Um, that will further elaborate and it's going to blow your socks off. So Shara Carter, I'm not looking at the chat. Do we have a favorite video they'd like to Absolutely. see? Absolutely. Let me pop on over to that screen and let's see what's going on here. Frog view, puppets, puppets, puppets. Pu oh, everybody wants to see the puppets. Yes. And it's actually a turtle. One, two, three, four, five. Ah. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Ah, what comes after twelve? Hey, uh, turtle, what you do? Whoa, what's all this? I'm trying to count, but oh. I want to get to 120. I keep getting stuck. Okay. I want to get better, but I don't know how. Oh, well, I mm. love to count, mm. and practicing helps a lot. Let's try some things to make it really fun. Really, really Notice right the closed captioning, the rest. Hmm. which I absolutely love because That's it's scaffolds and print to practice. Okay. It helps audio. count objects out loud. Mm. We can move them in a row as we count them. Okay. That way we can see which buttons we have counted. Okay. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 10, 11, 12, 12 13, 13, 14, 15. 15. Wow. Show Carter, in the interest of time, I'm going to yes. pause the video. Please do. Enjoyed it quite a bit. So if everyone who is a student in the classroom would go ahead and click and drag that lovely emoji over that is a poll formative assessment. So formative assessments can also uh, pull the audience on topics. So you don't have to be using it for actual data with respect to learning. It could be an opinion. Um, it could be voting in the classroom. And then if you type in the response section, that is going to let you see the other side of a new feature in Seesaw as well. And then as soon as you're done, students, if you would please turn that in because wonderful Cheryl is going to pop on over and show you how that looks on the teacher side. And hopefully we will have some data in there. Don't tell me there wasn't. Sorry, it's because okay. I was presenting to class. Oh, got it. Okay. We do. We have, um, let's see, about three students saying they, it was amazing. Uh, seven students saying, oh my gosh, this is the best thing ever. And here is our new free response. So let's try to find someone that types something. Please remember you need to click the green check. What a new feature is, I don't think anyone submitted quite yet, is instead of clicking on each person's work, it's going to summarize that up here for us. Let's see if someone wrote something. Maybe not yet. Maybe we'll uh, take a look at them. On a different one. Bit. Yeah, absolutely. But what you can see right now is that you have instantaneous data. This could be within the class period and not after school. You know immediately how things are going. And you have this free form response where everything is in one spot rather than having to pop from journal to journal. So it is really an effective way of time use for teachers. We're thinking about you. Okay, we're going to go ahead and pop on to the next section because as you probably have already looked at your uh, time, we are running out of it. So let's look at an area for practice 
the multimodal tools are really huge here where students can interact with their learning. So we're going to pop through just a few examples. Again, if you're a student, go ahead and engage with this. And when you finish engaging, go ahead and click the green check mark so we can show the data on the other side. But here we have one of our ELD lessons. And this is about, oh, I'm sorry, no, it is a newcomer lesson. And it is about the grocery store. And so the students are looking at two things here, identifying the fruit and the bread, but also looking at prepositional statements of next to, below, and above. So here we have listening. We have a sentence frame to fill in the missing piece, but we also can check right away. So go ahead, Cheryl, throw in some of those prepositions when you get a chance. All right, let me listen first. The fruit is the bread. Hmm, let's try this. Oh, shucks. Let's try again. Well, let's listen. Above. Oh, so. Is above. And if you didn't know the word above, it's got a recording next to it. Above. Yay. So let's go ahead and jump to the next slide of try it out. This is the quick check in the middle of the uh, Phenomenal Phonics uh, either free or paid uh, package. And these lessons have a great formative assessment piece built in. So on one side, you're gonna notice blue words. The words are spoken so the kids can listen to the rec recording. And then they're going to sort based on the targeted sound. And again, it's practice mode, not assessment mode. So the students can check. Now, if you wanted to turn it into assessment, you can switch that in your teacher dashboard. We have a blending where we have sounds of letters, they blend the word, and then they find the targeted picture and put it in the spot. All auto-correcting. And last but not least, we want our kids to practice segmenting. Segmenting is a very difficult skill when it comes to um, phonemic awareness and phonics. So here we're listening to it, we're listening to the word, and then we're gonna record the phonemes that you hear by segmenting that word. And I'm seeing a lot of, I love the auto correction. Yes, me too. Okay. Should we pop to the next slide? Okay. Cheryl, I'm going to let you talk about this one because this one's pretty hot off the presses. Yes, this is part of our ELD collection. So what students are doing before this page that you're seeing is they're engaging with the text. This is more the interaction with the text, especially for inferencing. This is a fourth or fifth grade example. So they can listen to the prompt here. Why did Anansi's feast get the animals excited? If you're joining as a student, your response here is basically free response. I, as the teacher, will be able to see all of your responses in one place, as opposed to clicking into each student's work. Which is really so we neat. would love for you to type something. It can be nonsensical, but go ahead and type something in there. So on the other side, we'll be able to show how that pulls up if you're one of our 150 students. And last but not least, we can have our students record and explain their thinking, which oh, is okay. huge. No, no, totally fine. Let's, let's hop to the next one. Yes, but to your point, Cheryl Carter, we really want to make sure we're giving students many different ways to choose how they want to showcase their learning, yes. but we're providing some scaffolding with the directions for how to get started. Oh, goodness gracious me, this is a great feature that we have just rolled out with Seesaw. This is Reading Fluency Friends Digital Running Records. It is a new feature. And we really would like you to uh, try this. You record by clicking record. You're going to read that out loud on your own place. Now, as you're reading, it is capturing your reading. And it is giving you a digital running record. Now, many of you are probably thinking, oh, that's for the younger students. We need to remember that all of us are developing our reading fluency. If I drop you in a very high tech college class, you're going to be developing your reading fluency with that content area. So definitely keep in mind that this goes through elementary school um, and not just for the littles. Uh, somebody just said I could use the, I could have used this in COVID. Yes, I, I totally agree with that. You want to go ahead and talk to that next one. 
And last but not least, I'm going to let Cheryl showcase this. It says may do later, but she needs to show you this other fantastic tool. Of course, we want students to help scaffold for other students. So she in this video is walking through and modeling the vocabulary in a sentence structure. But this right here is our new read with me feature. I'll let it speak for itself. The rabbit plants vegetables. The rabbit tries to pull the carrot. Think about the independence and the agency you can unlock for your students with this new tool. Yes, we've created it for you, but on your end, you can record your own voice as long as it matches the text and voila, Read With Me can be unlocked. There are more pages here um, that you can explore on your own time. Would students please click the green check mark to turn it in so we can at least show very quickly what things look like on the uh, other side. So you're getting data. It is based on rubric scores, uh, a four color base, but that can also be tweaked a little bit. And you are able to see how students scored and you can look at their uh, individual responses uh, item by item. Um, it it uh, extrapolates information into groups of got it, don't have it, still needing lots of help. It even tells you how many attempts a child did before they correctly responded. So you can get the guessers moved into a group and the I got it on the first try into another group. So really great information for teachers and you don't have to go hunting for it. It's all right there. Okay. Should we move on to the next section? Yeah, sure. Thank you. So this next section is connecting. Now, connecting to me is collaborating with your knowledge and collaborating with others. So we're looking at unique ways for students to express their learning, share their learning, um, and maybe even build on each other's knowledge uh, together. So let's go ahead and look at just a few. This is a great um, idea that you can use within your classroom. You can point out items in the classroom, take pictures of those items. This is, again, language development. So you're looking at potentially markers, glue sticks for newcomers to identify, uh, paper, desks, chairs, all those things that they need to have vocabulary in order to be able to be um, in a classroom engaged in their new environment. But then there's also the sentence frame. And then they get to record themselves. And if they forget what they're saying, they can go back, delete the recording, and practice. So lots of opportunities, very much like Santiago was doing in my example earlier in the lessons, or in the presentation, I should say. Okay, let's go ahead and look at the next one. And Cheryl Carter, I just wanted to quickly jump in. Out of the interest of time, if you've joined as a student, you will still have access to this class. If you're here and not a student, we encourage you to pick another number and explore after the session because we yes. know we want to honor do. your time today. Please do. So here's another place to connect. And this is a connect for you to look at all of the multimodal tools. So Cheryl, we're going to go across really quickly and explain the different uh, tools. Oh, oh, I'm sorry. No, no, we're totally good. Yes, let's, if you don't mind jumping into yeah, the jump, show, what you jump, know, just to quickly jump. show them what's here and then um, we can- Stay with us, we have so much. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so in Show What You Know, it is exactly what you're looking at. It is gauging what did they take away from all of these lessons. So in Show What You Know, we're looking at formative assessment. In all of the formative assessment pieces, you have the ability to turn off practice mode and put it into assessment mode. So you have actionable data when your teams meet to reassess uh, uh, instruction, to maybe uh, d decide small groups that need to have differentiation uh, in either pushing forward or reteaching. Um, lots of great options here. So we took the guidelines and we thought we would have you click and drag items up that you think the guidelines apply to all of these examples that we have shared with you through Seesaw. So if you wanna just click and drag, we are again gathering information on the teacher dashboard. So I want you to keep thinking about all of this information at your fingertips is just amazing. Okay. We're gonna jump to the next slide. Here's another challenge for all of you. If you would do us the favor and read a UDL, um, is it just one sentence too, Cheryl? 
Yes. It is. Oh, my goodness. So, friends, there's our reading fluency. You, as adults, reading in English, please, going ahead and... Let's do some reading fluency. So on your student account, if you'll click that microphone and practice reading this, we're gonna get a miscue analysis or a, um, a running record on the other side. And Cheryl Carter, right now, I just wanted to remind everyone, we're kind of modeling this. We, You probably feel like you're being rushed. So please continue to try this out yes, please do. later. This is kind of our learning objectives. What is UDL and how do you think Seesaw can better help you support your learners? So out of all the slides, we would love to hear from you here, either now or after the session. I do want to honor those of you that aren't able to get in. So let me grab the class code and then we can kind of wrap us up if that's okay. But it's if you're still in the sticky at the top. So that sticky note has the information. Yes, but it might have expired because it's only uh, 30 oh, minutes. Or really 60 minutes. Sorry, so give me a second. Here's a new code. I'll drop it in the chat right now. Perfect. But I'll read it to you if you wanted to join now. It's Z-B-A-U-L-W. Thanks, Josh. All right. So again, I know we didn't have enough time to fully dig in. Please join as a student to continue the learning. Um, we're going to quickly walk through some things in the appendix to extend your learning today. And if you're jumping to another session, do consider that in the end of the slide deck are all of these appendix pieces with lots of hyperlinks. So please don't feel like you have to stay with us because you have what we're going over right now. Yep. And namely, this UDL activity right here on the left-hand side of the screen I'm sharing, when you click it, it'll make a copy of the activity you're going through. So as an educator, especially if you're delivering PD within your districts or schools, you can leverage this, make a copy, tweak it, whatever you want to continue the discussion after today. All right, Cheryl Carter, do you want me to quickly walk through some of these things? Oh, actually, you know what? I think um, I can do it. I just had not advanced my slides. Thank you. Okay. So as Cheryl was just mentioning, you have the UDL activity. You can click on that link and click the heart in your Seesaw account as a teacher, and it will grab it for you. That's going to allow you even to assign it a sample student so you can then go through and practice those items. Um, you have the participant guide where all of these re resources and references are. Do you want to go ahead and jump to the next one, Cheryl? Okay, so here we have the graphic organizer. That hyperlink is going to take you directly to the CAST website so you can find a bigger version of what we have been sharing with you because it's a little fuzzy. And then we also have considering planning lessons. There's great questions to think about in that next um, URL that is hyperlinked. We also have UDL tips. And then at the very bottom, I know that many of you are coming from other countries and speaking languages other than English and Spanish, which is our targeted um, languages in the United States when, with education. Um, so go ahead and grab that translated version. Um, and as um, Cheryl was mentioning, it has to do with all of the rec recognized uh, UN languages. And then we have, oh my goodness, so much more. We're not playing the video, but this video is amazing. It will uh, whet your ap appetite to know more about UDL and CAST um, and lots of professional learning with in the cast organization. Last but not least, Seesaw is always there to support you as well. Don't forget that we are here as Seesaw users and Seesaw community to support each other. So there's lots of great teacher resources. There is a QR code. There's some hyperlinks here. And you can definitely go ahead and jump in to the Seesaw Learning Community. If you do not have a Learning Community account, I highly recommend you uh, go and establish one with your Seesaw account because it is a great place to learn. And there are lots of great resources there. There. And then last but not least, the Cheryls would like to say thank you for joining us. Lots of information. We did not have enough time to uh, dig as deeply as we could, but you can also reach out to us. So I have my Vacaville Unified School District email address and Cheryl has her Seesaw email address. And you are welcome to reach out to us and ask us questions and follow up ideas, etc. And we thank you. Great. Thank you, Cheryl Carter and Cheryl Miyake. Thank you so much for sharing how these UDL guidelines can be put into practice and some examples of those in action um, that will certainly be inspiring for new Seesaw users, seasoned Seesaw users, 
um, or current non Seesaw users. I think those are a lot of these strategies are generally applicable whether or not you're on Seesaw. Um, we hope you enjoyed this session today. One quick note, some folks were talking about um, a little bit of a struggle getting into the activity, whether the class was full or the code was not working. In the handout section on the Google Slides, slide 52 has the, the Seesaw lesson from this workshop. So you can click on that and explore that in Seesaw independently after this session if you'd like. Uh, we hope you enjoyed the session today. Your PD certificate will be emailed to you and all the session recordings, including this one, will be available on demand starting tomorrow. If you have time, please visit the networking tab to chat with other educators from around the world and earn points on the leaderboard. The top 50 people will win prizes. Also, please join our closing session today for more giveaways. Thank you for being part of Seesaw Connect 2024. And this wouldn't be complete if we didn't do a quick giveaway. So here we go. All right, the two winners from today are Jennifer and Gemma. Thank you so much, everyone, for Yay. attending. Congratulations to our two winners. Uh, if you are a winner of one of the giveaways today, we will email you after Connect uh, with instructions to claim your prize. Thank you, Cheryl. Thank you, Cheryl. And thank you, everyone, for attending and making Connect such a wonderful, engaging, and interactive conference. Have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thanks.